Hello my dear friends, I hope you're all having an amazing day. So in today's video, we're going to be discussing some new details from the canon book, Secrets of the Sith. Ever since the rise of Skywalker introduced the planet of Exegol, the question of its importance has come up time and time again. A lot of time material since has briefly explained why it mattered to the Sith, and even the Vader comics have taken us there. Now while Moriband or Korriban, the official Sith homeworld, is still canon, the new book Secrets of the Sith has retconned its importance. The book itself makes it clear that Exegol was more important to the Sith than their own homeworld. Writers Tom Veitch and Kevin J. Anderson were the first to come up with the idea of entire worlds swaying towards the dark side, and so they introduced the Sith homeworld, a planet which they named Korriban. George Lucas liked the idea, not least that the dark side had rendered this entire world barren, but he decided that the name was too similar to Coruscant, and so when the planet was introduced in the Clone Wars, he renamed it Moriband. Still, the Disney era made both names canon, confirming Korriban is an old name for Moriband. The planet is first mentioned in the 1994 Tales of the Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith, before appearing in KOTOR and later SWOTOR, but the planet made its first canon appearance in the Clone Wars Season 6 in the episode titled Sacrifice. But by that point, fans were well aware of the planet and its significance. Moriband was clearly very important to the Sith, and we will come back to this in a bit, but surprisingly, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker revealed it probably wasn't the most important. And this is something the new book Secrets of the Sith reiterates. As we see in Episode 9, Exegol was the site of an ancient towering Sith throne, suggesting that the Sith expected to rule the galaxy from Exegol. Secrets of the Sith expands upon this and establishes the importance of the Force Dyad something controversial in the fan community, as some argue that it retcons the rule of two. The Force Dyad is a legend that the Sith believed would enable them to conquer death itself. It is considered so monumental that it's even inscribed into the citadel walls on Exegol. But the question remains, why was Exegol so important to the Sith, and why has it now been branded as more important than Moriband? Well, first of all, to answer this, we need to establish something pivotal about the Sith. They want one thing and one thing alone, power. Unlimited power. <laughs> And just as Plagueis and Palpatine after him sought to achieve this, the one power they wanted above all else was the ability to cheat death. Immortality itself was the ultimate mark of power, the one true envy and desire of the Sith. In George Mann's Dark Legends, we learn that Exegol was the perfect planet to discover such abilities. It was a vergence in the Force, where the veil between life and death is thin. If there was ever a planet to achieve immortality on, it would be Exegol, at least according to the new canon. We'll talk about Moriband in a bit and why this is a retcon. So, according to Disney Star Wars, any Sith who sought immortality would inevitably be drawn to Exegol, meaning anyone who sought to become the Supreme Emperor of the Sith would build their throne there and want to take full advantage of the so-called Vergence. And this was to ensure their rule never ceased. But the problem was, the location of Exegol seems to have been lost, and in Chuck Wendig's novel Aftermath Empire's End, we learn that Palpatine's meditations led him to sense the existence of Exegol in the unknown regions. As told in Secrets of the Sith, when Palpatine rediscovered Exegol, he sent his most devoted acolytes there to claim the world and find a way to resurrect him if he was ever to be killed. So what about Moriband? Has Lucasfilm shunned it completely with the creation of Exegol? Well, kind of, but not quite. Moriband was the ancestral homeworld of the Sith, but the new book claims that it didn't possess the power that Exegol did, which retcons the power that Moriband held prior to Disney Star Wars. Before the rise of Skywalker, the Sith centered their focus on Moriband as the homeworld with secrets of the dark side that only the strongest Sith could ever dare to unlock. Well, not anymore. We are now told that Sith centered their empires on Exegol instead, and Palpatine was the last of these. His followers succeeded in retrieving his essence after his death in Episode 6 and implanting it within a clone body, but the process proved unstable because a clone could not contain the infinite reservoir of dark side that Palpatine had become. It wasn't until the Emperor met his granddaughter, Rey, that he believed he'd found a suitable host. And then, to his delight, he realized that she was part of the Sith's coveted Force Dyad. At that moment, the Emperor must have believed all the prophecies of the Sith had aligned themselves for him, but in the end, the foretold Dyad was the destruction of the Sith and not its triumph. The Sith had left Moriban looking for a future in which they would rule the galaxy, but in the end, all of their efforts were destined to lead to their destruction. It is telling that according to Secrets of the Sith, 
Palpatine never returned to Moraband. He never looked at the place the Sith had come from, stripped of life and symbolic of the doomed future of the Sith. So my issue with this, and the reason it's a retcon, is that it strips away why Moraband mattered in the first place. In many ways, it reduces it to a pathetic secondary planet that was superseded by Exegol. If you ever played KOTOR and had an attachment to the homeworld, you might be feeling a bit sidelined by this decision. And while I have no issue with Exegol, in fact, I think it's an awesome planet, you can't help but feel that the writers did not understand why Moraband was so significant. So allow me to shed some light on this. Moraband, during ancient times, was the official home of the Sith. No ands, ifs, or buts. Syost and Asog were also Sith-affiliated planets, but none were held in a higher esteem than Moraband itself. This was solid and indisputable. Long ago, the planet had a fertile habitat, but that was before the world fell to the dominion of the Sith. After many taxing wars, Moraband was left as an abandoned wasteland. But despite this, its existence was never forgotten by the Sith, and this is the most important thing to note. The Sith never forgot about it, and every member from Bane to Tenebrous, Plagueis, Palpatine, and so on, regarded it as the holy shrine of the dark side. Darth Bane, who created the Rule of Two, was the last Lord of the Sith to be buried on Moraband's Valley of the Dark Lords. In every single way, it was an indispensable planet, and that's why for Secrets of the Sith to claim that it played second fiddle to Exegol and was essentially forgotten in favour of the new planet changes a lot of associations that fans had with Moraband. As I say though, Moraband is still canon and they have not retconned everything. But it's a pretty significant thing to tell us that after all, Exegol is something that Moraband could never be. But what do you guys make of this? Have you read Secrets of the Sith? And what do you make about this retcon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give me a big fat thumbs up. Show me some love by subscribing to the channel. Hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video. And if you're feeling generous, why not consider becoming a patron? The link is down there in the description. But otherwise, my friends, may the force be with you always. I'm Star Wars Meg, and I'll see you tomorrow. My dear friends, the holiday season is upon us. Christmas and subsequently the Book of Boba Fett are drawing near. And this year, I'm feeling pretty festive. So right now, I'm in the process of setting up a new merch store, and there are going to be plenty of Star Wars Christmassy designs to choose from. And also, along the same lines, over the next few weeks, I'm going to be posting more wintry mixes over on my second channel Meg's Cantina. 